Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today I've got another VRAM related benchmark for you, but this time we're looking at modern games using four gigabytes and eight gigabytes of VRAM, because this should give us a clear picture of how VRAM requirements have evolved over just the past few years, and perhaps point to where things might be headed over the next few years. Today's sponsor spot is brought to you by Thermal Grizzly and their CryoSheet Graphene Thermal Pads, which are an excellent alternative to thermal pastes. They offer very high thermal conductivity with no liquid components so they can't dry out and therefore don't degrade over time like pastes and even liquid metals. CryoSheet is very easy to use, it's extremely durable and is available in a range of sizes to suit most applications. I've personally done some high-end GPU testing with CryoSheet and the results were impressive, very similar in fact to that of liquid metal, but without the mess and of course no risk of drying out. So for more information, please check the link in the video description. Now, a lot has been said about 8GB graphics cards over the past year or so, and a lot of that discussion was sparked by our 8GB versus 16GB video, comparing the Radeon RX 6800 and GeForce RTX 3070. I'm not going to fully recap that video here. If you're interested, then I suggest you just check it out. But in short, we found multiple examples where the 16 gigabyte RX 6800 performed much better than the RTX 3070 in modern games. And that performance advantage was directly related to the larger 16 gigabyte VRAM buffer. Since then, we have found more examples where games play better with 16 gigabytes of VRAM opposed to just eight gigabytes, either by delivering smoother frame rates or by providing higher image quality, a result of rendering all textures at the full resolution. And the purpose of that content was to raise awareness with gamers of the importance of VRAM. Hopefully being better educated on the subject would allow gamers to slowly force AMD and Nvidia to include more VRAM with future generations of GPUs. In the past, we've seen models such as the RTX 3070 and 3070 Ti released with woefully inadequate VRAM capacities, and these weren't cheap GPUs either. And sadly, even with this generation, we did end up with a $400 US product offering just 8 gigabytes of VRAM in the form of the RTX 4060 Ti, though there is now a 16 gigabyte version available for $450 US. But the fact is, in the not too distant future, 8 gigabytes of VRAM is going to be inadequate for a lot of new games. And of course, we've started to see a bit of this already. Therefore, we strongly recommend you purchase a 16 gigabyte version of the RTX 4060 Ti. If you're gonna purchase an RTX 4060 Ti, it's a small 13% premium that ensures that you won't run into any annoying performance or visual related problems down the track. More recently, we've also seen the arrival of the 16 gigabyte Radeon RX 7600 XT, which is essentially a 16 gigabyte version of the 7600, which only came with eight gigabytes of VRAM. However, in this example, gamers are looking at a 22% premium for the 16 gigabyte model, making it a bit more difficult to say which version you should buy. Though again, we'd suggest the largest 16 gigabyte model based on what we've seen previously when comparing four gigabyte and eight gigabyte GPUs, for example. Quite interestingly, when the 16 gigabyte RTX 4060 Ti landed, I saw a lot of people claiming that the 16 gigabyte VRAM buffer was pointless for such a product as it was too slow and the 128 bit wide memory bus resulting in a bandwidth of just 288 gigabytes per second meant that it wouldn't be possible to utilize the larger buffer. This is a bit of an odd claim because we proved in our RTX 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte review, so the day one review, we proved that the larger VRAM buffer was indeed useful, showing examples where performance and or image quality was substantially better. Despite that though, similar claims were also made about the Radeon RX 7600 XT, as it's even slower than the RTX 4060 Ti. In that example, we're again looking at a 128 bit wide memory bus with a bandwidth of 288 gigabytes per second. And presumably for this claim to be true, it would mean products such as the Radeon RX 6500 XT wouldn't be able to utilize an eight gigabyte VRAM buffer, given it packs a feeble 64-bit wide memory bus with half the bandwidth of the 7600 XT. And that's an interesting comparison. And as it so happens, I have both a four gigabyte and eight gigabyte version of the 6500 XT. And other than the difference in memory capacity, both versions are identical. Like the 7600 XT and 16 gigabyte RTX 4060 Ti, 
the 8GB 6500 XT simply doubles the number of GDDR6 memory chips used with the additional chips soldered to the backside of the PCB using the clamshell method. This makes the 6500 XT the most recently released and most powerful GPU to feature both 4GB and 8GB configurations. Of course, the 6500 XT is a very weak GPU, but for this testing, that works in our favour, as it will give us some insight into how weaker GPUs utilise larger memory buffers. The 4GB versus 8GB comparison will also provide us with a peek at how 8GB versus 16GB might play out over the next few years. So for this testing, I'll be looking at a little over a dozen games, all of which have been tested at just 1080p using a range of quality settings. The test system is based on our Ryzen 7 7800X 3D using DDR5 6000CL30 memory, and of course we will be using PCIe 4.0 for the 6500 XT to ensure maximum performance. Okay, let's go look at the results. First up we have Baldur's Gate 3, probably not a game you'd associate with heavy VRAM usage, as it's really not by today's standards, but it can still fully utilise an 8GB VRAM buffer, which is a problem for the 4GB version. When using the ultra quality preset we saw a 27% increase for the average frame rate and a massive 44% uplift for the 1% lows when using the 8GB 6500 XT. Also, because data destined for the local video memory wasn't spilling over into system memory, RAM usage was reduced by 26% for the 8GB 6500 XT configuration. Next up, we have Cyberpunk 2077, and here we're using the medium quality preset at the native 1080p resolution. And I should note, all testing in this video avoids using any kind of upscaling technology. When limited to a 4GB VRAM buffer using the 6500 XT, we saw 46 FPS on average, making the 8GB model 17% faster. But again, it was the 1% lows that saw the biggest uplift, 34% in this example. Memory usage increased to 6.8GB, and RAM usage dropped by 17% to 10.9GB. So again, having enough VRAM is vital for performance. Dying Light 2 has been tested using the high preset, which allows for 60 FPS gameplay, but these quality settings don't exceed a 4GB VRAM buffer, so the 4GB and 8GB versions of the 6500 XT delivered the same level of performance. And when 8GB graphics cards were first introduced, most results did look like this, which is why gamers assume that buying a 4GB version of a product like the RX 480 was a good idea, and admittedly, so did we. Moving on to Forza Motorsport, using a mixture of high and ultra settings, we see that the game can use as much as 6.4GB of VRAM at 1080p, and this led to a 35% increase in average performance for the 8GB model. Immortals of Avium is a visually impressive title, or at least it can be. With enough VRAM, we were able to enable the high quality preset, and then manually dial the texture quality up to ultra, and still received over 30 FPS on average. Not exactly amazing performance, I will admit, but this is a 6500 XT, so yeah. And rather the point being, without enough VRAM, the game is completely unplayable. In fact, using the lowest quality settings the game had to offer, the 4GB 6500 XT still didn't have enough VRAM, resulting in just 9 FPS on average. So again, completely unplayable. It's crazy the difference in performance here using the same GPU with the only real difference being the VRAM capacity and what a difference it makes. Another new game that is heavily reliant on VRAM is Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart. And remember, we're only testing at 1080p here using the lowest possible quality preset and doing so saw the 4GB model render just 44 FPS on average making the 8GB version 45% faster, or an incredible 108% faster when comparing 1% lows. And this is because the game requires, at minimum, 8GB of VRAM, using 7.3GB in this example. Also, because the 8GB card did have enough VRAM, system memory usage was reduced by 32% when compared to the 4GB model. Next up we have Spider-Man Remastered, and for this game we were able to enable the highest quality preset, it is a very well optimised game, and the highest quality preset is labelled very high. 
With 8 gigabytes of VRAM, the 6500 XT was able to render over 60 FPS, making it 26% faster than the 4 gigabyte version. And this is because the game used up to 6.8 gigabytes of VRAM in our test scene. And again, ensuring that we had enough VRAM with the 8 gigabyte model reduced RAM usage by 24%. Now, for this section, we're going to make a number of comparisons, many of which will be accompanied by image quality comparisons, and there is a lot to go over. But stick with it, I think there's a lot of content here that you may not have seen before, and we'll start with Assassin's Creed Mirage. Using the low quality preset, the 8GB model was still 8% fast, as the game used up to 5.7GB of VRAM. Now, for these results, I've still left the low quality preset enabled, but I've manually increased the texture quality to ultra high. As a result, the 8GB configuration saw a 7% reduction in performance, but the 4GB model saw a massive 42% decrease or 75% decrease when looking at the 1% lows. The game is now coming close to maxing out the 8GB VRAM buffer, which is why the 8GB model saw a small decrease in performance and a slight increase in RAM usage. The end result though, being a playable 66 FPS on average for the 8GB card, making it 74% faster than the 4GB model, or 338% faster when comparing 1% lows. Essentially what all this means is, for roughly the same level of performance, you can enable ultra high textures with the 8GB model, while the 4GB card will be limited to low texture quality, and even then we're still seeing an increase in RAM usage for the 4 gigabyte model. So we've seen the numbers, and here's how that translates into what you see. On the left we have the ultra textures, and on the right, the low textures. At a glance they look pretty similar, but as you start to pay attention when you're playing the game, you will notice the differences. Now remember, we are using the lowest quality visual settings, so stuff like level of detail, shadows, lighting, and other visual effects are pretty compromised here, but you can clearly see that distant elements are rendered at a higher quality using the ultra high textures. The brickwork on the ground, for example, so ground textures, they are noticeably better, and this really jumps out at you when playing the game. Hopefully YouTube compression hasn't butchered these visual comparisons, and it is difficult to tell in this test, but stuff like the foliage on the trees, for example, does look better, but overall in this title, the differences are often very small. But the point is, with the 8GB model, you get visual upgrades for free, there is no performance hit, so it is clearly the superior way to go. Banishers Ghosts of New Eden is a game I just purchased, so I haven't spent much time testing it, but it does require more than 4GB of VRAM at 1080p, even when using the lowest quality preset, as the 8GB 6500 XT was a massive 35% faster when comparing the average frame rate, and 64% faster for the 1% lows. And this is due to the fact that the game uses 4.7 gigabytes of VRAM, which isn't much over the 4 gigabyte buffer, but clearly enough to cripple performance. Now, if we keep the low quality settings and just adjust the texture quality to very high, we see that VRAM usage increases to 5.8 gigabytes on the 8 gigabyte model, and this sees it lose almost no performance making it 65% faster than the 4GB version and 122% faster when comparing 1% lows. And this means you can max out the texture quality on the 8GB card and still see up to 58% better performance than the 4GB model, which was using the low quality textures. So again, you're getting much better performance coupled with an increase in visual quality. Next we have Hogwarts Legacy, not a well optimized modern AAA title, but an extremely popular game all the same. Using the lowest possible quality settings, the 4GB 6500 XT was good for just 71 FPS on average, which seems decent, but that's until you learn that the 8GB model is actually capable of 81 frames per second. And that's a 14% improvement, though it's a 24% improvement in 1% lows, and you'll notice that the most. The game really does require more than 4GB of VRAM, and in fact, despite using the lowest possible quality settings at 1080p, we're not that far from maxing out the 8GB buffer with 6.8GB of VRAM used. In fact, we even saw a 52% increase in RAM usage for the 4GB configuration as data destined for the video memory overflowed into system memory.
Of course, if we enable the ultra quality textures, the situation gets even worse for the four gigabyte model. And now system memory usage has increased to 17.7 gigabytes, while frame rates have dropped by 33%. This made the 8GB model 70% faster on average, as the game was now using 7.1GB of VRAM. And that means you can play Hogwarts Legacy using an 8GB 6500 XT, using the ultra quality textures, and with 80fps on average you could even stand to increase a few other quality settings. But for the sake of this comparison, the 8GB model was 13% faster when using the ultra quality textures, versus the 4GB model with low quality textures. Now the visual difference between the low quality preset using low textures versus the low quality preset using ultra textures is night and day, meaning it is very noticeable when gaming. Even in these static scenes you can quite clearly see the difference, and I chose to compare Hogwarts Legacy this way as it was extremely difficult to get the exact same matching scenes as I was moving around. And hopefully you can see it, but to the right there's a stack of pots on screen and they are rendered in much higher detail when using the ultra textures. Also, looking at the A-frame building in the distance, you can see that the bricks that make up the facade are rendering at a much higher quality. Then in this scene at the food cart, simply increasing the texture quality results in significantly higher image quality. Again, remember, everything else is set to low. All we're doing is increasing the quality of the textures. And this results in stuff like the shape of the vegetables looking much more realistic. And of course the textures of the vegetables look just worlds better, as does the ground textures. And even the crates on the cart look much higher resolution. Basically everything looks noticeably better. And a problem I actually found with the 4GB model was texture pop-in. So despite using the low quality textures, which again we did see a performance hit associated with that, there are other visual issues, and I don't mean textures were slow to load, well, I don't just mean that, rather textures would constantly despawn, then reappear, even when you're standing still. And you can see a good example of this here, as it's most noticeable on the bricks on the right hand side of the screen. It's crazy to think that the comparison on the left side of the screen, which looks worlds better, also resulted in significantly better performance, for the 8GB version of the 6500 XT. Even the hair quality of this bull looks much better, and something else that will jump out at you when playing the game is text quality. Take this scene for example, it's almost impossible to read this rather large sign when using the low quality textures, but it's very easy to read using ultra quality textures. Skull and Bones is another recent purchase of mine, so for this one I'll be using the built-in benchmark, at least for now. With the low quality settings enabled, the 8GB model was 11% faster on average and 26% faster when comparing 1% lows, as the game used up to 5.1GB of VRAM. But if we increase the environment details from low to ultra high, VRAM usage increases to 7.2GB on the 8GB model, and this gives it an almost 30% performance advantage when comparing the average frame rate. This means for a similar level of performance, the 8GB model can run the environment details setting maxed out, while the 4GB model is limited to the lowest setting. Moving on to Star Wars Jedi Survivor, here we're using the very low quality preset, which is still very heavy on VRAM, and although the average FPS performance is much the same, the 8GB model did provide much better 1% lows, improving performance here by 23%. Then if we enable the epic quality textures while keeping everything else on low, the 8GB model only drops a few frames, while the 4GB model saw a 24% decline, rendering just 35 FPS. And this meant it was possible to receive better performance with the 8GB model using epic quality textures, when compared to the 4GB model with everything set to low, textures included. Visually, this didn't always make a big difference, though admittedly I didn't check a lot of the game, but even here you can see that distant texture quality is much higher when using the epic quality texture setting. And again, these visual improvements don't come at a performance cost, at least relative to the 4GB model. But things that jumped out at me include the quality of these crates here, the epic texture version looked much better, and any distant textures looked much better. Overall, it's fair to say that the Epic Texture version did look much better. Next up, we have The Last of Us Part 1, which has always been very VRAM heavy, and even after multiple updates, can max out 8GB buffers. 
The biggest improvements to optimization though have come in the way of texture quality for low and medium settings. Even so, with the lowest quality settings, the 8GB card is still 11% faster, which is a reasonable increase, and we see this uplift as the game is using more than 4GB of VRAM, as the 4GB model saw a 1GB increase in RAM usage. Now, if we increase the texture settings too high, we're able to max out the 8GB 6500 XT at 1080p, with usage hitting 7.9GB. That said, FPS performance goes unchanged, whereas the 4GB model saw a 33% hit, dropping to 31 FPS on average. Then, if we enable the ultra quality textures, the 8GB model does run out of VRAM, resulting in a 24% performance hit, but still 38 FPS on average is much better than the 28 FPS we saw from the 4GB model. That means if we compare the most optimal configurations, so the 8GB model using high quality textures and the 4GB model using low quality textures, we see that the 8GB version is a whopping 61% faster. And performance aside, the visual upgrade is rather significant. The high quality textures offer a number of visual upgrades, and from the opening cutscene, one of the most obvious improvements can be seen on Sarah's t-shirt. Again, it's text quality that's a big issue when using low quality textures. You can actually read the names using high quality textures, whereas it's impossible when using low. The front of her t-shirt also looks much better, and the box she hands Joel features noticeably higher texture quality as well. And the eagle-eyed amongst you will have noticed that even Joel's hair on his arms looks much better using the higher quality textures. And something else you'll notice when playing is the character faces. Sarah's freckles, for example, are much more noticeable when using the higher textures. Then we see in this scene that the bedside table looks significantly better using the high quality textures, as does Sarah's face and arms. Then in game, the difference is even more noticeable. Again, character models look far more detailed, and the ground textures really jump out at you. Overall, the 8GB model is offering a significantly better experience. The last game we're going to look at is Total War Warhammer 3. But before we get into it, it is worth noting that every single preset applies ultra quality textures, but it will automatically reduce texture quality if there's insufficient VRAM, unless the unlimited VRAM option is selected. Therefore, I've ticked the unlimited VRAM box for our testing and manually set the texture quality. Starting with the medium quality preset and medium textures, we see that both models delivered the same level of performance, so 71 FPS on average, which is good. But if you want to enable the high preset with high textures, the 4GB model will struggle, dropping to 33 FPS on average, making the 8GB model almost 40% faster, as VRAM usage hits 6.1GB. Then when using the Ultra preset with Ultra textures, the 8GB model drops down to 38 FPS on average, which is still 36% faster than the 4GB model, and now VRAM usage hit 6.9 gigabytes. What all this means is the 8 gigabyte model using ultra settings is still faster than the 4 gigabyte model using high settings, 15% faster in fact. Given we're only going from high to ultra, the visual difference isn't massive, but that isn't to say there's no difference. The main things that jump out at me were the improved shadow detail, higher quality foliage on trees, and more visual effects. The game certainly looks better using the ultra settings, and 38 FPS on average is probably enough for this title, but if you want over 60 FPS you'll have to use the medium settings with the 6500 XT, and doing so only requires a 4GB buffer. It's not surprising that 4GB VRAM just isn't cutting it in 2024, and I think that's news to anyone. Not going to shock anyone, but just how poorly it's doing may surprise you, especially considering the fact that in almost all instances we were using the lowest possible visual quality settings at just 1080p. For me, this comparison really was interesting as it gave us a good look at what happens when you do run out of VRAM, and not just in a few edge cases, but almost en masse. And this really should give us some clear indications of where 8GB graphics cards are heading, and it really wasn't that long ago that 8GB of VRAM was thought to be pointless, and or overkill. In fact, if we take a look back, the very first Radeon GPU to offer an 8GB VRAM buffer was the R9 390 and 390X, way back in mid-2015, and at the time it was completely pointless. Essentially, these were refreshed 290 and 290X models with a price hike. 
Then there was the RX 590, which was technically the first GPU to use 8 gigabytes of VRAM exclusively in late 2018, though it was really just an overclocked RX 580 on a slightly newer node. Therefore, Vega 56 and 64 were truly AMD's first new GPUs to adopt an 8 gigabyte VRAM buffer exclusively, so there was no option for a 4 gigabyte model, and that took place back in late 2017. Then mainstream affordable 8GB AMD graphics cards, they really didn't arrive until late 2021 in the form of the Radeon RX 6600 series. As for NVIDIA, the first GeForce GP to exceed 6GB of VRAM was the Maxwell-based GTX Titan X back in early 2015. It packed a 12GB buffer, but cost a cool $1,000 US, which at the time was pretty insane, so not sure we can count that one. Mainstream models didn't appear until mid-2016 with the Pascal-based GTX 1070 and GTX 1080. They were priced at $380 US and at $600 US respectively, though it did get a price cut to $500 US. Then we got the RTX 2070 in late 2018 for $500 US, and it was NVIDIA's cheapest 8GB model until the RTX 2060 Super arrived the following year for $400 US. And we didn't get a cheaper GeForce GPU until the crappy RTX 3050 in early 2022 for $250 US, though it generally cost a lot more than that. But I guess this is the first affordable 8GB model from NVIDIA, as the RTX 3060 Ti still costs $400 US. So we received the first 8GB enabled GPUs way back in 2015, and at the time they were deemed pointless. Admittedly, even by myself, which... I admit was short-sighted on my behalf, though I think I loved just how affordable the R9 290 had become back then. Even with the release of the RX 480 in mid-2016, it still seemed as though the 8GB buffer was largely pointless, despite the 8GB option costing a mere $40 US more. In fact, I remember at the time being a bit annoyed that AMD only sampled the 8GB versions of the RX 480 to media, as the 4GB model was much better value in terms of cost per frame, at least at the time. Then by the time the RX 580 rolled around, not much had changed, though for a mere $30 US premium, we were now recommending viewers opt for the 8GB model. Then in late 2019, I compared the 4 and 8GB versions of the RX 5500 XT and concluded that if you're a single player gamer who prioritises visual quality, then you'll want to avoid the 4GB model like the plague. So, based on that timeline, in 2017, when the RX 580 and NVIDIA's Pascal GPUs were on the scene, we were recommending 8GB options when available. And by 2019, strongly recommended avoiding GPUs with just 4GB. Budget permitting, of course. And that's a relatively tight turnaround time. Basically, we went from 8GB in 2015, when it was first introduced as being pointless and a bit overkill, and it was still much the same story in 2016, though by 2017 we were starting to see signs that it might make sense to invest in an 8GB model, if possible, and by 2019 it was a strong recommendation, then 4GB did start to become almost unusable for modern gaming by 2022. Therefore, it makes sense that today you'd want to avoid 8GB GPUs, especially when spending $300 US or more. And this was the point I was trying to make early last year in my 8GB versus 16GB video. We've got a number of real examples where 8GB GPUs just aren't cutting it, even at lower resolutions such as 1080p and 1440p. So if we're seeing a number of examples now, then history does suggest that it won't be too many more years before 8GB GPUs are almost unusable outside of the very lowest possible quality settings, and even then, performance may not be great. This video also highlights just how important VRAM is. With 4GB, the 6500 XT is a steaming pile, but with 8GB, it's pretty usable, though sadly, the 8GB models aren't $140 US, and they aren't really easy to come by. They're not properly available yet, so we'll have to see how that situation develops over the coming weeks. And they do also suffer from all the same shortcomings as the 4GB models, such as PCIe 4.0 times 4 bandwidth, just two display outputs, and of course, no hardware encoding. But I'll tell you what, with 8GB of VRAM, it is worlds better. So that's good. And that's also going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a like, subscribe for more. Bit of a different look at VRAM, but yeah, I found it interesting, so hopefully you guys did as well.
And maybe if you really found it interesting, check us out over at uh, Floatplane or Patreon. Signing up to either one of those will give you access to our exclusive Discord server, monthly live streams, Q&As, and behind the scenes content. But if you're not interested, then that's fine, I guess. I'm not upset. I'm not disappointed. I'm not upset. I'm just your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time. <laughs>